Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This morning I just filmed our July garden tour and when I was out here I saw this beautiful patch of sweet potato leaves. I hadn't realized that we had so many beautiful sweet potato leaves because normally I keep this bed covered. So after I saw that this morning, I figured I just had to harvest some of these and cook them up for dinner because they look so good. And I've only just recently started cooking sweet potato leaves. I tried it for the first time last year because people had commented saying that sweet potato leaves are really good. So I tried them out and they are very delicious. To me, they're kind of like spinach. They're a very tender green and they cook up really quickly. And I've used them in soups, just adding them in at the very end to wilt them down. And I've also stir fried them. I know you can also eat them raw, but I haven't done that. And today I'm going to be stir frying them for dinner with some garlic. And I figured we can just do that together. I will start picking these and then I'm going to bring them in. And I'm going to cook them up with a bunch of other things from the garden as well. And I'll show you how I've been cooking up some of the stuff we've been harvesting lately. So these leaves are just so beautiful and very little damage to these. In the past I have had some of my leaves kind of have holes in them from maybe caterpillars or something eating them, but this year maybe because they're covered they're just looking so beautiful. So I am gonna go through here and pick a bunch of these leaves. I'm just uh, breaking them off and trying not to get too much of the stem. I don't want any of like the thicker stem. And I'm just picking the ones that look really good, which kind of is all of them, but I'm gonna try not to take more than like maybe 30% of the plants because I do still want my plants to form sweet potatoes. So I want to make sure I leave some leaves for them to have energy to grow the sweet potatoes but we have plenty to pick from here it's like a very nice green blanket of sweet potato leaves within a few seconds I have a bunch here I'm gonna go until this bowl is full because as with lots of leafy greens once you cook them down they wilt down a lot so you kind of need to start with like a pretty big volume so that you have a good amount at the end, once everything has cooked it down. So in addition to the sweet potato leaves, I am also going to be making some smashed cucumbers today. Well, I've already made them, but I'll show you that whole process. And I'm also going to be doing some like Korean style zucchini pancakes or fritters. That's one way I've really been enjoying cooking our zucchini lately. And then I might also do some quick like garlic chive eggs as well. So I'm gonna pick some garlic chives after I finish picking these sweet potato leaves. But everything else for the meal, I already have picked inside. So I'm just gonna show you how I'm gonna prepare all of that. All right, so just like that, I have a huge big bowl of sweet potato leaves, still plenty in the patch for the rest of the sweet potatoes to form. And I could probably do another meal or two from my bed of sweet potatoes after they grow a bit more and make more leaves. But this is gonna be plenty for today, I think. So yeah, pretty cool. Another case of using part of the plant that not everybody thinks to eat. Most people grow sweet potatoes for the actual sweet potatoes, but you can eat the leaves as well. And we are all for using every part of the plant that you can. So I'm picking some of my garlic chives here to make a really quick and easy 
garlic chive omelet, which I've shown before because it's something I make a lot because it's really delicious and easy and also uses up eggs and we always have eggs to eat thanks to our chickens. I just have a little handful of garlic chives here, which will be enough for tonight. So here's our harvest. I have a couple other things inside that I'm gonna cook up and I'll show you the whole meal. First, I'm gonna show you how I made the smashed cucumber salad. I'm starting off with two medium-sized cucumbers from the garden and I'm going to place a kitchen towel over them and start smacking them with a rolling pin or some other blunt object just to get them nice and smashed. The towel helps to keep the cucumber seeds from getting all over the kitchen. And I'm just going to keep going until it looks like the cucumbers have broken up into nice pieces. And once they have, I'm going to take my hands and tear the cucumbers into bite-sized pieces. If there are any big pockets with bigger seeds, I like to just scrape those out with my fingers. It doesn't have to be perfect, but any of that area with like the seeds in it will be a little bit more watery and the texture won't be as good, so I like to take out some of that if I can. And then the rest of it I'm just going to tear into pieces and put it aside in my bowl. And the reason you smash cucumbers for this salad instead of slicing them or cutting them is because smashing them helps to release a lot of their moisture. It kind of breaks down the cells of the cucumber a little bit. And it also makes for really nice craggly shapes that will hold onto the dressing really well. I'm sure I've shown this dish before because we have it every summer. It's one of our favorite things to eat in the summer and we always look forward to cucumber season so that we can have this meal again. It's one of our favorites and we have it multiple times a week. Basically any cucumber that makes its way into the kitchen turns into smashed cucumber salad. I've been really liking this variety of cucumber that we've grown this year called Bait Alpha. They are great for smashed cucumbers, but you can also use pickling cucumbers and also like those long English seedless cucumbers. Those are also really great for this. I would just stay away from maybe any cucumbers that have a lot of big seeds in them. So once my cucumbers are all ripped into little pieces, I am going to sprinkle about a half teaspoon of salt onto them and mix that around. And then I'm gonna let this sit in the salt for about 15 minutes. This is going to help draw out some extra moisture out of the cucumbers. After 15 minutes, I can drain out any of the water that has accumulated at the bottom of the bowl. And you can see there's quite a bit there and depending on the type of cucumber you use, there can be even more. So now I'm gonna finish up the salad by adding one garlic clove that is finely chopped. Then I'm also going to add some thinly sliced red onion as well as one hot chili pepper that I've thinly sliced. You can leave out the chili pepper if you don't want it. And then I'm going to add a teaspoon of sugar, a teaspoon and a half of soy sauce, a teaspoon of rice vinegar, two teaspoons of sesame oil, and then you can add some gochugaru, which is Korean hot pepper flakes, if you want to make it spicy as well. I use usually around two teaspoons of that, and then I finish it off with a sprinkling of white and black sesame seeds. So you can leave out the hot pepper and the pepper flakes if you don't want to make it spicy and make a not spicy version, but I really like the combination of like the spiciness of this salad, along with that like really refreshing crisp cucumber. It is such a nice combination. So after mixing that all up, this salad really is best if it sits for one to two hours before serving. So I usually try and make this beforehand and then stick it in the fridge. I've definitely just made it last minute within like 15 minutes of eating and it's still really good, just not as good as if it marinates. So if you have the time, try and make this an hour or two beforehand. Now I'm gonna prep some of the other ingredients for the other dishes in the meal. First I have one zucchini from the garden that I'm going to slice up pretty thickly, kind of around like three quarters of an inch rounds. This is going to be for the zucchini pancake fritters that I'm going to be making. And then I'm also going to slice up the garlic chives that I harvested for my garlic chive eggs. I also had a korbachi pepper in the fridge that I wanted to add to the eggs as well. This looks like a spicy pepper, but it's actually a sweet pepper. And I think it'll be a good addition to kind of mix up the dish a little bit.
and then I'm going to get like the batter stations ready for my zucchini pancakes. In one bowl, I have about a half cup of all-purpose flour, and then in my other bowl, I'm going to add two eggs to this, and then I'm seasoning both of those with about a quarter of a teaspoon of salt each. By the way, the chicken's eggs right now are so golden orange because of all the Japanese beetles they've been eating, which is kind of gross to think about, but it does make for really golden, delicious eggs, so you know, we just don't think about it when we eat it and we're just enjoying these beautiful eggs. So now to make these zucchini pancakes, first I'm going to coat each of the rounds of zucchini in the seasoned flour mixture, then they're going to go in the egg mixture. So this is kind of like the first two steps of a lot of breading processes that I've seen, where the third step would be maybe breadcrumbs to get that like crispy exterior, but this is a very different kind of pancake. I've noticed that a lot of Korean style vegetable pancakes, they often end with the egg as the outer layer and you end up with like kind of like a softer texture, but a more intense egg flavor, which I really like since we love eggs around here. So it's a little bit different than kind of like the fritters or pancakes I've had in the past, but we've really been enjoying them. And it also saves you a step compared to like the normal three-step breading process. So that's also nice. It kind of makes it a little bit easier. So those zucchini pancakes are going to fry in my cast iron pan where I have about a quarter cup of avocado oil. And once that's heated up, I'm just going to put in my zucchini rounds and it's okay if the egg kind of like spreads around in the pan. And then I'm gonna cook these pancakes for a few minutes on each side until they're nicely golden brown and the egg is cooked all the way through. The zucchini is gonna get nice and soft inside. And these zucchini pancakes have been so much fun to make. I just love the way they look because they're like so nicely golden brown with the egg and they have kind of like a creamy texture. It's not like a crunchy fritter, so don't be expecting like a crispy texture but it is very much like eggy and creamy. The zucchini cooks down and it's almost like custardy inside and they are so good. So I've been loving using up some of our homegrown zucchini this way. Everyone's always looking for new ways to cook up zucchini. It's just like a thing every summer. I feel like you always have to Google like recipes with zucchini and this is one thing that I've really been enjoying. So if you're looking for something new to try out, maybe try out this recipe. So in my bowl where I had that extra egg batter, I'm just going to add a few more eggs to this to cook up my omelet. Don't need to waste any of that egg batter, so I'm just going to add to it and add three more eggs. And then I'm going to season that with salt and pepper and I'm going to add my chopped garlic chives into there. Once my zucchini fritters are all cooked and have been removed from the pan, I'm just going to quickly fry off that sliced corbachi pepper before I add in the omelet mixture. Those just need about a minute or two to cook since they are pretty thin. And before I add in the eggs, I'm going to add a tablespoon of avocado oil just to recoat the pan and make sure the egg doesn't stick. And then I can add in my garlic chive and egg mixture for the omelet. I'm gonna try my best to flip this omelet, but sometimes it just happens in pieces and that's totally okay. And then we're gonna use the same pan to cook up our sweet potato leaves. Yes, we have used the same pan for three dishes in a row because listen, I'm not trying to dirty up more than one pan if I don't have to. I mean, to be honest, Aaron does the dishes, but I'm not a monster. I'm not trying to create like a million pans for him to wash every night because I'm a good person. So yeah, we're gonna use the same pan and cook up our sweet potato leaves now. First I added a couple more tablespoons of avocado oil to my pan and then I'm adding in a couple of sliced leeks. You can also use onions, but I had some leeks from the garden that I wanted to use. So I did that instead of onions today. 
and then I'm going to let those fry for a few minutes until they start to get soft. Then I'm going to add in two to three cloves of garlic that I've chopped up and let those cook for about a minute until it starts to get really nice and fragrant. And then I'm going to start adding in my sweet potato leaves to the pan and I'm going to have to do this kind of in batches just adding a handful or two at a time and then you kind of have to wait for those leaves to wilt down before you add more but they will cook and wilt down really quickly. I've now added all of my sweet potato leaves and you can see how that big bowl really wilted down. But we still have a nice amount here. It doesn't like completely turn into nothing. Like if you tried to cook spinach, you still end up with a pretty good amount of greens, which I really like. And I made sure to season with salt. And then to finish this off, I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of sesame oil, which is going to add a really nice nutty flavor and is also going to make the leaves really nice and glossy as well. Okay, so here are the finished dishes. We have our garlic chive and pepper omelet here, our zucchini and egg fritters, our spicy smashed cucumbers, and then of course, our sweet potato leaves. Okay, so I'm gonna taste test sweet potato leaves before I call Erin in for dinner because it's been a while since I've had these and I've only had them like one or two times before that I've cooked them, so I want to do a little taste test and let you know what it's like. It's really good. It really does taste like spinach. There's like a little bit more of like a toothiness to it. It's not quite like a hearty green like kale or collards. I think it's delicious with the garlic and the sesame oil. I mean, you can't really go wrong with that combination with any leafy green, but it's so good. Then our smashed cucumbers. Have to have a little bite of that as well. It is so good. This meal is like all of my favorite things in one place and 100% of it is homegrown pretty much. Down to like the garlic, the onions, and the egg, we grew everything on this table, which is pretty incredible. So we've definitely gone to the point where a lot of our meals are like this, where it's like a lot of it is homegrown, especially during this time of year when we're eating a lot from the garden. But it's kind of easy sometimes once you get to that point to forget how special it is. And it definitely is very special. And it's always cool to try out new things from the garden as well. So if you haven't tried eating sweet potato leaves, try it out because they're really good. So now we're gonna sit down and enjoy dinner. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you. And I will see you again in the next one.